The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. John, John, sorry. Oops. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before. It is the Spirit that gives life. Flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the ones who would betray him. He said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied Jesus. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you want to leave? Simon Peter answered and said, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe that you are indeed the Son of God, the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right from the beginning, Jesus is challenged. In the last few weeks, we've been reading from this Gospel of John. And the gospel selection is focused on the section of John that has to do with Jesus as the bread of life. Today is the conclusion of those selections from this, you might say theology, or you might say teaching on the bread of life. But you think after reading all the text on the bread of life and Jesus is explaining that you have to eat the bread of life and that my, my flesh is the bread of life and they're sitting down listening to all this that they would believe. We heard the example today. Some stop, they stop believing the bread of life. What we call the Eucharist. His body and blood. Now, you and I have the same challenge that those early disciples of Jesus had. You, we come up to the Eucharist. As it comes out of the tabernacle and places it on the table, or the words of consecration are said over the bread, this becomes the body of Christ. Now, if you're not a believer it would look like magic, confusion, doubt. And people who were listening to Jesus saying, you have to eat the bread of life, because without the bread of life, you're not going to get to my Father. But my Father has already chosen who's going to believe and who's not going to believe. And some of them, listening to Jesus, said, nah, I, I, I can't believe this. this. This is too much for us to take. That was two centuries ago, 2,000 years ago. I wonder how many still have that doubt. I mean, we in this church, this physical church of St. Anthony, have a lot of seats. And if everyone in the parish or neighborhood really accepted the gift that Jesus gave us himself in the Eucharist, there would be no room, no room for anyone. So it means that in the world today, there are many who still doubt who he is, 
They said, well, he's a nice prophet. He's son of Mary, son of Joseph. And the choices are ours. Do we accept him for his word? Or do we leave him? Then you have the philosophy today. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm a good person. I don't go to church. I say my prayers. I go on the beach. I go on the mountains. I, I walk the streets. I, I'm a good person. And I speak to God in my own way. Okay. I'm not condemning that. But it misses the gift that was offered to us 2,000 years ago, the gift of his own body and blood. And those who left him were what we call the disciples, people who had been following him and learning from him, but finally, push comes to shove, they just couldn't accept it. So he says to the 12, all of them, the 12 apostles, uh, you gonna leave too? And Peter speaks on behalf of us, I hope. But he certainly spoke on behalf of the twelve. To whom shall we go? We've been listening to you. We've learned to follow you. We've learned to believe in you. We're watching you miracle after miracle, walk on water, multiply bread. To whom shall we go? Who has answers like you have? And that still is our response. Who has the answers that Jesus has? Who hears us whenever we speak to him? Oh, there are philosophies in our world, in our country, in our city galore. Tons of philosophies. Tons of different belief systems. So through all that we scatter, through all of that we choose and those of us who are here choose the Son of the Living God. We don't choose a philosopher. We don't choose a politician. We don't choose a relative. No, we are listening to the words of the Son of God. And Peter speaks on our behalf. To whom shall we go? You have the answer. Now, we all have questions. And Peter's answering for us. But whatever our questions are about life, about relationships, about politics, war, and peace, it doesn't matter. Whatever our questions are, Jesus has the answer. Jesus is the answer. And Peter spoke to, about us and for us when he said, who are we going to go to? What person has the answers that you've given us by raising the dead, multiplying bread, walking on water? You have the answers. And we have so many questions. Every one of us in this church has a question, I'm sure, about the place of God in my life or about me in my life, myself. Where am I going with my life? Jesus has the answer. And we get that answer when we speak to him in prayer. And we receive the nourishment he gives us with the Holy Eucharist, his own self, his own body and blood. So you can go outside, have a cappuccino, have a, a biscotto, have a little uh, croissant. Good. That, that, that stuff is good. It feeds you. But it feeds the pans, it, feel, it feeds our stomachs. It doesn't feed our longing. So maybe being good enough is not good enough. Being a nice person who minds my own business, maybe that's not good enough. Because what we have offered is something far greater than just being a good human being. He has raised our humanity to divinity you know, when we put the water and the wine, I don't know if you notice it, but when the priest has the chalice, there's wine in the chalice, we drop a little bit of water in it. And the prayer is interesting. We're mingling the water with the wine, just as Jesus mingled his divinity with our humanity. 
It comes from an old custom of watering down the wine from ancient Rome. But the religious symbol is educational. It reminds us that he walked this earth as a human being. He was God, and he walked this earth as a, earth as a human being, and then burst out of his humanity with the resurrection to prove that everything he did during the years he was teaching was God-ridden, inspired by God. Jesus is not asking us to come for free food. Yeah, I know that the parish has a regular pantry method to help the people in the community. That's different. This bread gives us everlasting life. And it's a piece of host. It's not going to fill your stomach. But when that host that is the body of Christ comes into us, what an experience we're being given to join ourselves with God, to join our personalities, our fears, our hopes with God, and placing them all at his feet, saying basically, who else has the answers like you have? You have the answers of everlasting life. And the scriptures today remind us it's commitment. Even in the Old Testament, we read the book of the people of Israel in Joshua. Just a little reminder, people of Israel had just gone through the promised land. They're finally there. They were in Shechem and they're getting tired because the world is tough on them. Some of them say, you know what? I'm going to go worship that God over there because those people give you food. I'm going to go worship that God over there because those people are happy. I'm going to go because they walked into a polytheistic culture. So Joshua, Joshua says, okay, you decide. You decide. Me and my family, we're going to follow Yahweh. We're going to follow the true God who led us through hell and high water, through the desert, through the sea. We're following Yahweh. And then he turns to them. Who are you going to follow? If Joshua were here right now, he can say to all of us, who are you following? Or we could say automatically, Jesus, because we're here at Mass. Hmm. You follow him out there? You follow Jesus in your homes as you vote? When you walk on the streets? As you greet people in church? Being nice is not enough. Being a Christian who accepts the fact that I have available to me, every one of us, the body and blood of God. And all he wants us to do is live a committed life, committed to him, his Father, and his Holy Spirit. To whom shall you go?